What's up guys, welcome back to Trouble, back to another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be working on the E90M3 and trying to get this bad boy started. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, I actually ended up picking up another E90M3. And this one in particular, the reason I got it is because it has some super clean Apex wheels. I'm definitely gonna have to get some stuff touched up on there. Brand new Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires, has a manual transmission and a single hump dashboard, P3 gauges. And of course, guys, the main reason I picked it up is because it has an ESS tuning supercharger on here um oh my god this thing is such a beauty but also if you guys look at this car um this car needs a lot of work there's literally nothing on this valve cover it has a bunch of things missing on both sides and uh long story short um yeah this thing does not run and the goal is just to try to get it running so the first thing i want to go ahead and do is actually remove this engine plenum hopefully by removing that we have a lot more access to everything else around it and uh just start unbolting things and just start replacing things with either oem parts or brand new parts so we can get this thing running for those of you guys who are new to the channel i'm actually using this supercharger on my e91 m3 in the backyard i'm building the best literally i'm trying to build the best m3 out there in terms of the e chassis we're talking supercharged we're talking a sick individual color we're talking manual gearbox a bunch of other cool goodies the reason we're not actually working on the e91 m3 right now is because your boy needs money he's been spending a lot of money behind the scenes and uh, we need to get this thing running we need to get this thing complete sell both of these cars to be helping us towards the e91 m3 project and our dream car by the end of this year which is an out Audi R8 V10. Like, guys, if we can actually accomplish that by the end of this year, it's gonna be insane. So, anywho, guys, without further ado, let's just go ahead and remove the ESS supercharger. So now that we pretty much removed everything up here that I can see that looks pretty much aftermarket, um, uh, the next thing I wanna knock out is this intake. So it has a custom air scoop and a custom intake for the supercharger kit. Uh, so we do need to remove the bumper to debolt that. See, I think the easiest thing for us to do right now is actually just remove this front bumper because we actually have to unwrap it as well. So it's something we need to take off regardless. Um, remove this section right over here. Once you have that removed, um, honestly, I'm probably gonna focus on taking off these coolant hoses and just getting off this belt. Once you have to get this belt off, you possibly can even get that alternator back in place place and then we need to order a new belt to get all this front assembly fully completed as you guys can see there's a lot of oil right in this section right here and that's because of the whole issue um, where they drilled right through this cylinder right here so um again hopefully we can get that stuff repaired and then we can fully assemble this entire section but in the meantime guys let's go ahead pop off this front bumper and try to get that intake out And just like that, guys, we finally have the custom air scoop cut out. It looks like they use a k and air intake for this system, which is super nice. I actually really like this brand. So the fact that they're partnering up with them, I really like that. And if you guys look over here, there's an actual part number two. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get this replaced. I want a brand new one when we actually put it into the E91 M3. We have all the other lines that I went ahead and pulled out from the top of the engine. And then this stuff was actually all in the trunk. We obviously have the turbo, all the inlets, the pipings, the oil catch cans. So that's all super nice. And guess what I found in the trunk too? This is what I, you actually have to use um, to get it tuned. So uh, yeah, I'm hoping hoping that the tune is in here. If the tune is in here, we are good to go, guys. I don't even have to spend an extra five or $600 to reflash the E91 M3. That'd be so, so, so sick. Also, what I found in the trunk, uh, ignition coils, which is a big plus. These are the OEM ignition coils. I don't even think they sell aftermarket ones of these. So uh, yeah, super happy we found these in the trunk as well. And over here, I see brand new um, end links in here from BMW. So that's super nice as well. So we have some extra end links. But yeah, I believe that right there, guys, is the full supercharger kit uninstalled from this car. I believe this is the 500 and 60 horsepower i think it's a 560 and a 640 or something like that i think the last thing we have to uninstall is this belt so we'll get to that hopefully in a bit for now guys um before we actually start putting things back to stock i want to actually remove both of these valve covers um and uh, make sure those gaskets are actually replaced crazy story guys the car was actually running perfectly fine 
um, before he actually got his valve covers replaced. He got the valve covers replaced, and then when he tried putting the bolt back in there, that's how they actually punctured the cylinder, um, and that's what happened there. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these valve covers once again, and uh, just try to clean off as much of this orange stuff as possible. I'm just not digging it. Alright guys, so now that we have pretty much everything off this valve cover in this little bin, all that stuff needs to get cleaned up, probably even replace some gaskets, um, but this piece right over here, I need to dip it in some acetone. So um, no point to do that right now because we still have the other one and I want those both sides to match. I'm literally doing all this work, assuming the engine's good, <laughs> so hope to God this engine is gravy in the Navy. So our biggest issue right over here, I don't know if you guys can see, there's a hole over here, there's a screw hole there, and exactly like this one, there's one in, a, in pretty much right down here. Um, now basically what happened was he put a bolt in here that holds on the supercharger kit and it was a little bit too long so it actually went right through and punctured right through so even if you put a bolt in there fluids are still gonna come straight through it so long story short let me know the best method to go ahead and fix this now we could probably end up just putting some JB weld back there I don't know if I really want to do that though I probably want to get this thing welded or possibly even replaced my question is do we have better access to it can we actually just remove this camshaft I think this is called a crankshaft or I think either a crank or a cam I don't know internals of any so I think, I believe this is the crank, crank, crank. I'm gonna say crank. This one doesn't actually have the chain on it. This one has the chain on it. This one just has the gears on it. So I'm wondering if we go ahead and just remove all these bolts and move this out of the way, get our stuff sorted back there and put that back. Would we be graving the Navy or we're gonna have some issues? Let me know down below if you guys have any expertise when it comes to stuff like that. But anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead, remove this valve cover, remove everything on it. And uh, so, we can get, so we can get that sorted as well. So now that we finally have everything disconnected off this valve cover, you guys can just see how nasty this valve cover is. I definitely need to clean it out because you can even see a little piece of this paint already went inside of there. Again, we need to get this thing off and cleaned off literally perfectly so this stuff doesn't actually affect the engine. Honestly, I was thinking about painting my valve covers on my E91 um, hard pass. I'm honestly just gonna try to get it back to OEM and honestly not try to put any paint or if anything, I'm just gonna get new valve covers. Because this stuff, not only does it look ugly, but honestly, you can get inside the engine and uh, cause some issues. And guys, after hours and hours of uh, sanding down, using acetone, using power, using a using a power washer, um, that's as far as I got. Literally, this has been such a pain. So I'm gonna go ahead, head down to Walmart, get some paint stripper, and hopefully that will do a better job than acetone because acetone is just not working. And after a quick stop to Home Depot, I, I think we got everything we need to start working on these valve covers. So after watching a bunch of videos, I found out that this is literally the best paint remover. This one can cost me $20, but I mean, I could buy the cheapest paint can remover and be, be at this for like three days or spend the extra money and get this off in the next probably two hours, honestly. We also got some high temperature paint in black. Honestly, they didn't have gray and I don't wanna repaint this any other color. So I think black honestly is more than good enough and it's still really gonna look good. And we got some steel brushes right over here because once we actually spray this bad boy on, we're gonna actually have to uh, scrape it off. Off. And this right here is the JB Weld they're going to be using to patch up uh, little things like that imperfection, that imperfection, and this imperfection, just to uh, make things look a little bit better before we actually start painting these. But without further ado, let's go ahead and spray this on and hope to God it makes a big difference. Guys, I cannot believe my eyes. I just took off the cap and there's literally nothing here. Um, I can't believe that's something you actually have to check when buying cans. That That is ridiculous. Guys, I just want to put something out there real quick. This isn't just my first fail in like the last day. I was actually sick for an entire week. You guys 
guys didn't even see that because I was grinding and I got two videos out and I was recording four days worth of content, put those in two videos and I got that out. So in the time frame that I was sick, I saw an extra video. Um, so I got that out and it was out and about. Long story short, unfortunately, after getting sick, um, I was trying to get some seats for the daily, um, well for the old daily to try to get that thing all squared away so we can get that thing sold and out of here. But unfortunately I couldn't find seats anywhere and then this morning I had a phone call from the place I actually placed an order with saying that the seats, they couldn't get them out because the, the transmission tunnel was bent and it's blocking the seats, yada yada yada. So long story short, your man was out of seats. I was like, you know what? I'm actually gonna film another video and that's the video we're actually filming right now. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to get things to work and just things keep failing and it is what it is, that's life. I just wanna let you guys know that sometimes you have days like this and it doesn't mean you're supposed to give up it just means that you know that's life take a step back breathe and uh, things are gonna turn out hopefully in the better um, it's just let me go get something to eat before I actually go back to Home Depot because I am starving and I, I I'm I, I'm not gonna lie I lost a little bit of my patience just now and after a meal and another trip down to uh, Home Depot uh, we got the necessity we needed we finally have a nozzle so let's go ahead and spray this on there it says it only takes 15 minutes for all the paint to come off so actually you might be able to get this thing uh, squared away today So now at this point, I'm pretty much down to my last coat because my can is completely out and I don't wanna go ahead and try to scrub it down one more time, pass it one more time right now. Just because if it doesn't work, I have to go buy another can. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait till tomorrow morning and then hopefully this is 100% settled and all the paint should be able to just come off freely and super easily. And then both of these will be ready for paint. Honestly guys, um, unfortunately, I really wanted to get the car started in this video. Like I was gonna try to figure out a way to kind of get that hole fixed up and then get those valve covers on there and get the car started in today's video but it doesn't look like it's gonna be in today's video probably in the next video so if you guys are excited hopefully in the next video to get this thing started and i mean i mean i really started i mean who really knows because the thing is i don't really know if this engine's any good the fact that it has a hole in it, it's already kind of worrisome the fact that it had a supercharger on it, it's kind of already worrisome so um I, i'm really hoping the engine's good though because you guys know uh, we're trying to hopefully try to flip this car so if this engine's good it's gonna severely help us towards the r8 dream so hopefully fingers crossed guys again smash that like button to support this channel and smash that like button one more time guys for some good luck to hopefully we get this thing cranking again like oh my god it'll be such a miracle we have literally everything else to perfect this car it's just that engine hopefully hopefully guys everything's gonna be gravy in the navy now without further ado guys that is gonna have to conclude this video i wish there was some more progress on this video but i don't want to delay it any longer it's already super late i'm gonna get this video out for you guys tomorrow and then possibly in two days i'll get you guys hopefully the next video of us at least cranking it and seeing what is going on and hopefully everything's gravy in the navy without further ado i love y'all so much remember to stay humble i'll see y'all the next one. Peace out.